Hi everyone, my name is Kavya Chandra and I'm a product manager in the Azure Purview team. In this series of videos, I'll walk you all through the different steps needed to register and scan from various non-Microsoft data sources. Today in Azure Purview, we support sources like Teradata, SAP S4HANA, SAP ECC, and Oracle in public preview. We also support Hive Meta Store in private preview today. Let's get started with Teradata. The different capabilities supported for the Teradata sources are full scanning, as well as lineage between the data assets. Before registering a Teradata source, there are few prerequisites that are needed. First, we need to install the latest version of the self-hosted integration runtime. Second, we need to install JDK 11 on the virtual machine where self-hosted integration runtime is running. Third, Visual C++ Redistributable 2012 Update 4 is needed on your virtual machine. Fourth, Teradata JDBC driver is needed to fetch the metadata from your Teradata server. So the executable jar file can be downloaded directly from the Teradata website. Please note, the driver should be accessible to all accounts in the VM. So do not install in a user account. And fifth, the supported Teradata database versions are 12.x to 16.x. Make sure to have the read access to the Teradata source being scanned. Now, let's jump to a demo. This is my Azure Purview catalog. To register a source in Azure Purview, click on Register Sources tile. Click on Register. And let's look for Teradata under the database category. Select Teradata. Click on continue. Let's give it a friendly name. For the host parameter, we can provide a host name used by JDBC to connect to the database server, or its IP address, or the fully qualified JDBC connection string of Teradata. So I'm going to give the IP address here. Next, I can select a collection under which I want this registered source to appear. So I already have a collection called demo collection. So I want it to be seen under demo collection. Let's click on register. As you can see, the newly registered Teradata source now appears under the collection called demo collection. Before we can trigger a scan, let's make sure we have an integration runtime running. In order to check that, let's navigate to Management Center. Under that, let's click on Integration Runtimes and make sure we have an IR running. In this case, I do have a self-hosted integration runtime up and running. So I'll be using this for Teradata scanning. Okay, so let's go back to the sources. Let's click on new scan. Let us give a friendly name. Now I'll choose the IR that is running on this instance of my catalog. Next, for credentials, we support basic authentication in Azure Purview today. So I've already created an AKV, Azure Key Vault, wherein I've stored my Teradata password in a secret. So I'll be using that particular credential to, to use in my scan. The schema input parameter is used to scope your scanning. So if, you, if nothing is given in this particular input parameter, the entire or all schemas within a Teradata server will be taken into consideration for scanning. If I want a specific schema to be scanned, I can just give its name something like this. Or if I want multiple schemas to be uh, 
taken into consideration for a scan, I can separate them with a semicolon between the two schemas. Something like this. Let me just stick to one schema for the sake of the demo. So I'll just leave with one schema name there. Next, the driver location. So if you remember, one of the prerequisites for scanning a Teradata source is an, an installation or downloading the JDBC driver in your self-hosted, in, in your VM where SHIR is running. So uh, I already, on my VM, I already have the JDBC driver downloaded. So I just need to give the location where that JDBC driver is, is downloaded on my VM where self-hosted integration runtime is running. So as you can see, um, under the D drive, I have a folder called drivers on the VM. And that's the path where you can see the jar files of the Teradata JDBC driver. Next, under the maximum memory memory available parameter, uh, we need to let the scanning process know that, okay, how much memory do I have on my VM, which can be used for the scanning activities. Uh, this completely depends on the size of your Teradata server that you are scanning. Uh, mine is not um, a very big one, so I'm just going to go with 16 GB. And this means that 16 GB of my VM can be used for scanning activities. By default, we save the cache in a specific location, as you can see on this particular tooltip. If I want to change it, change the location and save it somewhere else, then you know I can just click on this checkbox and provide the path on the VM. However, I'll choose to use the default cache location and I'll click on continue. In this screen, uh, we can either uh, set up a recurring scan or a one-time scan. I'll just go with the one-time scan for now. I'll next review the different parameters that I would have configured and then I'll just save and run. So this is how we uh, trigger a scan of a register data source. Um, for the sake of the demo, I'll just show you um, a source that is already scanned. So this is a different source that I had registered uh, sometime back and already performed scanning. As you can see, I uh, already have run one scan and 33 assets have been discovered. So let me just go show uh, the details. So as you can see, we have 33 assets that are discovered and the scan was successfully completed. So if I were to go see in the browser sets, I should be seeing a Teradata tile here. And yes, this is the one. Over here, we see the server that was configured and scanned. And under that server, we should also be seeing the different databases or the schemas that I would have uh, scanned. And within a particular schema, we see the different tables, stored procedures, views, etc. We can also search a Teradata source in the search results page. In the search results page, I can select Teradata. I can choose the server and under the server, the different databases that are that were part of the scan. So for this demo, I'll just choose one database here. And then um, I'll just choose a, a table where you can see the overview section where different properties are shown, uh, the schema where you have different columns, and then of course the lineage where we show that, okay, hey, this is a Teradata table. There's a copy activity, Azure Data Factory's copy activity uh, from a Teradata table to an Azure blob. Let's take another example of a stored procedure. So under the overview tab, you will still be seeing the different properties and you know, the description, hierarchy, etc. However, in the lineage tab, we also show um, the lineage within a database or a Teradata source, 
For example, uh, the data from a table is used within a stored procedure, which is then used in a different table called test account VIP, uh, which is then the input or, you know, uh, this particular table is then used to create a Teradata view. And all these are now depicted in the lineage view uh, within Azure Purview. So with this, uh, you know, we have gone through how to register a Teradata source, how to set up a scan and view the results of a, a scan.